Shalom, Shalom. Well, you know, we're back here again to uh, prophesy this, you know, downfall of this kingdom, man. Throughout these scriptures, you know, giving all praises to Yahweh. Moshev, Moshev, And of course, double honors unto the apostles and the elders and the great those who have taught us this truth, man. You know, out here battling the elements and the winds. You know, this is uh, our service, man. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get straight into it, man. This is 1 Samuel 25 and 1. And Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him, and buried him in his house at Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. And there was a man in Moan, who's like here, Moan, whose possessions were in, in Carmel. And the man was very great, and he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Yeah, and back then, you measured your, your wealth by your cattle stock, your land, all right, your increase, man. So this guy was a very rich man. Um, um, yeah, so uh, back in 1 Samuel 2 and uh, it's like 25 and 3. Now the name of the man was the bar, and the name of his wife Abigail, and she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. Right, so yeah. this guy, he, he, his name was Nabal. Now in the scriptures, oftentimes, um, the Lord would deal with all the Normans, man. Alright? The way people were named is the character that you have. Alright? And the word Nabal in Hebrew means simple or foolish, man. Okay? Simple, man. You know? But it said what? His wife, the scriptures made it clear to us that his wife Abigail was what? A woman of understanding. Okay? Now, in today's day and age, you, think, you can forget about it, man. You ain't gonna find no woman of understanding. Okay? But in the ancient world, okay, women were in their right order, man. And she could have a level of understanding and a level of discernment. Okay? And back then, women were naturally beautiful. Alright? Now you may see a woman today and she's she's I and that's beautiful to us, but compared to the ancient world, uh, these holes are ugly, man. Yeah? Okay, but and that's the that's the that's the perfect package. She's beautiful to look at, okay, beautiful body, beautiful face, and she's a woman of understanding. Okay, but as for the bomb, alright, he was an idiot, man. Keep reading. Uh, verse verse 4. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. And David went out ten young slucker. And David sent out ten young men. And David sent slucker sent unto the young, unto the young men, get up to Carmel and go to Nabal and greet him in my name. Verse yes. six. And thus shall you say to him that liveth in prosperity, peace be to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be to slucker, and peace be unto all that thou thou hast. Yes, so David was basically saying. Yeah, David was setting a test to um to Nabal, man. Okay. Because David, what he did, he sent out ten young men, alright, and basically gave a greeting in his name. Okay. Now read that it's like the last two verses you just read about peace. Uh, first Samuel uh, 25 and, and 4. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. And David sent out the ten young men. David said unto, it's like it, unto the young men, get up to Carmel and go to Nabal and greet him in my name. Verse 6, and thus shall you say unto, like it, shall you say to them that live up in prosperity, peace be both to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. Yeah, because that's, that's the thing, man, like, and it's going to tie in, you know, it's all over the place, but what I'm saying is going to tie in, man. When you give a blessing of peace to somebody, man, you're actually putting a blessing on that person, man. Okay, when the brothers greet each other, you know, say Shalom, well, all right, you're actually given a blessing of the peace that the Lord has given to you, and you're, you know, through the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son, placing it on that man. Okay, so when David was saying, all right, peace be unto you, and he gave it, um, and he gave it that blessing unto the ten young men. Okay, he that was actually a genuine blessing that was going to be placed upon the above, Okay. 
but then there's more to it. Keep going. Verse 7. And now I have heard that thou hast shearers. Now thy shepherds which were with us, we hurt them not. Neither was okay, neither was there aught missing unto them. All the while, it's like all the while they were in Carmel. Verse 8. Ask thy young men and night them, and they will show thee. Wherefore let the young men find favour in thine eyes. For we came in good like we came in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to the, thine hand unto thy servants and to thy son David. Verse 9. And when David's young men uh, came, they spoke to Nabal according to all those words in the name of David and ceased. And Nabal answered, answered David's servants and said, Who is David? See, that's that, that's that nigga mentality, man. Okay? Because you damn well know who David is. Okay? But who, who is David? Okay? You know, hey, you, and hey, the scriptures told us, man, that he was churlish and evil in his doings, man. Okay? Because David has sent out these ten young men to, to uh, basically give him the blessing of peace and then require of him then that was David and Arts. But then when the young men came and gave that blessing, you know how niggas are man like David. Who's David? Who's this guy? Who's David? Who's that? Who's you know, this? always thinking that they're the top don. Okay, they're the best guy, there's no big figure back in the day. Okay. So here what? Uh, 1 Samuel 25 and 10 And the ball answered Sorry, the ball answered David's servants and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? Who is, like, who is Yeah, who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Yeah, because Yeah, because Back then, all right, it was of great integrity, all right, and you were proud and, and honoured to come from a certain line, man. Okay, you would greet somebody saying, "Listen, um, you would say, this is my name. I'm the son of so and so, the son of so and so. Okay, from the nation of X, Y, or Z." Okay, why? Because, and it weren't just with Israelites, all people did that, man, because you were proud of where you came from. Okay, so when Nabal saying, and who's the son of Jesse, he's not only dissing David, he's not dissing his line, man. Okay, and hey, man, you diss a man's line, that's a problem. Okay, okay. Uh, verse 11 Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shearers? and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be. Yeah, because David basically said unto um, the men, go to him and get the meat, man, okay? Get a share of that. But he was saying, no, I ain't doing that. I ain't gonna give the, um, basically, um, the food that I got, that I've worked for, and forsake my shares and give it unto you. I don't know where you're coming from. Who's David and who's Jesse, man, okay? But I was that proud spirit on him, man. Well, uh, verse 12, so David's young men turned, the, turned their way and went again and came and told, all, all, sorry, and told him all those sayings. Verse 13, and David said unto his men, gird ye on every man his sword. And they girded on every man his sword, and David also girded his own sword. And there went up David about 400 men and 200 abode by their stuff. Yeah, because back then, all right, leaders, Kings, warriors, they wouldn't just send out their their army. They were at the front, man. Okay. Yeah. King or no king, you're you're at the front, man. All right. You're on the front line. You you went to war, man. Okay. Now David was on that vibe of man. If you ain't gonna listen to what I'm saying, I'ma kill you. Okay. Because sometimes people can, you know, people do something, man. It happened to me like ten times on the way down this morning, like. Somebody just cut you up or they look at you a funny way or whatever the case may be and you just get that anger over yourself like man I should kill your ass man okay that's how they would what do you mean what do you, you mean you're questioning me about who I am what do you mean you're not gonna give to me you know what fuck that man let's take 400 men okay gird up our swords and we're gonna destroy everything of yours now okay go on verse 14 
But one of the young men told Abigail, the Baal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness. And the point I'm getting at, man, the point we're getting at is about sincerity, man. Okay? Lying, alright? Being a nigger, okay? But being a sincere nigger, man. Alright? And then we're going to tear it, um, tie it all in to when it comes to this truth, man. Okay? Because the scriptures give many accounts of people that were sincerely off, man. Okay? Since sincerely caught up in that niggerish mentality, man. Okay? And that can't run, man. Especially with the men of the Lord, man. That's right. Okay? And that's why Nabal got his ass fucked up, man. Okay? But keep reading. Uh, verse 14. But when of Slack it. But one of the young men told uh, Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on them. Verse 15. He, he was wilding out, man. Go on. But the men were very good unto us, and we, and we were not hurt, neither missed we anything, as long as we were Slakia, as long as we were uh, conversant with them when we were in the fields. They were. Verse 16, they were all wool, Slacky. They were. Slacky. They were a wool unto us get, both. Get, get excited, bro. Us by both by night and day. All the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Now therefore know and consider what thou wilt do for evil. against all his household, for he is such <laughs> as a son of Bel Belial. Yeah, flick it down, flick it down. Speak to him. <laughs> so he was, he was arrogant, man. Like, he was on that, you know, this is me, I've made it, I'm rich, nobody can chat to me by it, man. Go on. Verse 18. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two, two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed. Yeah, because the scripture said at the start of the chapter, yeah, that Abigail was what? A woman of understanding, man. Okay? Here's a stupid ass husband, alright? His name is Nabal, which means simple, okay? Yeah? Oh, he's David, and he's the son of Jesse. So like, oh, as his name, so is he. Oh, you know, it said something like that in the scripture, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful, man. Okay? So he was quite, oh, who's David, and he's the son of Jesse. But Abigail knew, she already talked on. When they, when, they, when they told her, and she was like, oh shit, okay? Because if you know about David, David ain't gonna let that pass, man. How you gonna chief up David like that and expect to be all right? What's wrong with these fucking people, Verse 19, and, he, and, he, and yeah, she yeah, said yeah. unto her servants, Go and I, I hold on to it. I Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. Verse 20, and it was so that she rolled on the ass, that she came down by the by the cover of the hill. Behold. Now, go read up the verses. So, um, 1 Samuel 25 and. Uh, 17. Now therefore, know and consider what thou wilt do, for evil is determined against our master, and against the, against all his household, for he is such a son of Belial, that a man can speak to him. Verse 21. Verse 21. Verse 21. Verse 18. Then Abigail made haste, and took 200 loaves, and two bottles of wine. Yeah, so she made haste, man. Okay, because she understood that David, he's going to react. He's going to react quick, man. So, I've got to try now and do something to appease that anger, man. Okay, to lessen the blow. Alright? And best believe, man, when she was making haste to do all of this, she knew, man, it would have been in the forefront of her head. Hey, if David don't accept this, he's going to kill me on sight. But it's worth the try. Okay? So, she, she, she got her, her, her servants to go before her and she made haste and made the loaves and put the two bottles of wine, man, okay? As a gift unto David. Or verse 20. So like, yeah, verse 19, um, yeah. yeah, verse 18. And five measures of parched corn 
and 100 clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs. So she bought a, a big gift, man. Her, and laid them on asses. <coughs> Donkeys, God. Verse 19. And she said unto her servants, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told me, not her husband the ball. Yeah, but of course you're not going to tell her husband, man. Imagine, like, you're at, as Benjamin saying, wow. <laughs> you're, you're at war with the next man, all right? But then your wife is saying, hey, baby, listen, listen yeah, we can't do that, man. This guy, I love you, you know, but he gonna fuck you up. Okay, so don't, you know, that's embarrassing, as the brother said, man. So she knew that, yeah, I can't tell this guy, I can't tell the ball. If he's going to tell me to sit down and... If he told me to sit down and shit, I gotta sit down. <laughs> okay? I, I, I can't go against him. He'll fuck my ass up. But if I don't do this, then we're all gonna get. Alright? So she was stuck. down by the court of the hill. Behold, David and his men came down against her and she met them. So, yeah. hey man, that's a terrible sight, man. Especially for a woman. Right? You know, you've got David and 400 men behind him. And the scriptures done told us that they saddled up their, their, with their swords, man. They were on the wall, we're going for a hike in the, in the hills, man. They were on that war mode, okay? And warriors back then, even, even a... Uh, uh, when you look at ancient um, Japanese um, uh, warfare, they would have like a, a psych up session the night before where they would say, listen, baby, I ain't, I ain't talking to you. Take the kids away. We and the soldiers, we just go and go out in the fields and psych each other up, man, because the next day is war. It's even in the scriptures, man, that when you go to war, don't come at your wife for three days, okay? Because when you come at your wife that means to lay with her, like you know when you, I don't want to get too graphic, but you know when you, you're with a woman and you're busting up, you feel weak, man. Yeah, yeah that's true, right? That yeah. is true. Um, that's why a lot of um, energy can be taken away from you. You're having sex. Because that's the life, the life is in the sperm. You see, when you bust up, that's a lot of, that's why boxers, you know, have had a little bit of sex. Yeah, when they say well, two will become one flesh, that's biological and, and spiritual because they've, they, on, on tests and, and brothers have said it as well that she actually starts to develop your characteristics yes, does, over does. time. And when the, when the scripture says you uh, should be one flesh, okay, yeah, yeah because you've cut her hymen and you're, you've not, that's not your wife, but that's if she's a virgin anyway, which you ain't gonna find these days. But, uh, Actually, a part of your sperm goes to her brain. Okay, there's studies on it, which is proven fact that women have male DNA from the sperm, the sperm which is which goes to their brain. Okay, now where's your spirit? In your head. Okay. She now sees what you see. Okay, she, she's she's a second-hand copy of you. Okay. 
thank you. I don't get mad no more because sometimes Satan puts a veil over some people and that's why they, they actually don't know what they're doing. She, her eyes was open though and, and the guy she was with, his eyes was, his eyes were veiled. <laughs> so that's that man. Alright. You know. So when you when you lay with a woman man, that, that takes a lot of energy from you, man. Okay? So how the hell are you gonna go to a war and start snoring people? That's why the scripture says, and it takes three days for a man for a man's um, um, testicles to, to replenish to a full full amount. That's why I said don't come and quiet for three days, man. How many times are you not allowed to have sex? Is on the Sabbath, of course, all right, and in the wilderness when the Lord came down, man, because you'd be unclean. And that's according to Leviticus 15. But that's the point, okay? So back in with Abigail, she was in the, she was face to face with warriors. So back in our First Samuel 25 and 21. Now David had said, surely in vain have I kept all this fellow. Surely in vain. I kept all this fellow hath in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertained unto him. And he requited me evil for good. Verse 22. So and more also do the most high unto, en unto the enemies of David. If I leave of all that pertain to him by the morning light, any that, that pisseth up against the wall. And when Abigail saw David. So David was saying, man, fuck, man, I did good and he's repaying me evil, okay? By morning, everything of his, including himself, was gone, okay? You know, David was ready to, to, to slow him all the way, man. Verse 23, and when Abigail saw David, she hastened and lighted off the ass and fell before David on her so, face. So Abigail jumped off that ass, man. She jumped off that donkey, man. When she, <coughs> when she saw David face to face, man, she jumped off, and what did she do? She fell to the ground, man. Okay? Now you imagine a black woman, I don't call you an issue, man. You imagine a black woman doing that today? Now when she sees a lord, when she sees a, a, another man, she falls to the ground, okay? And bows down, man. Okay? You ain't gonna see that, man. Okay, that's just non-existent. They want you to be the one jumping off the donkey bound to them. Go on, man. Verse 24. So that shows that women were in the border and Abigail had a she had a head screw up, man. Go on. Verse 24. And fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my lord, upon me, let this iniquity be. So she said, man, hey, all this bullshit that my husband's been doing, man, put it on me. Okay? Put it on me, man. Man, that's his name, he's stupid, man, he's stupid, man, okay? Yeah, she's probably fed up with him as well. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you know? But because of out of the law and out of and being royal, she had to stay with his ass, man. But she got blessed for that, bro. We don't get to that, bro. So back in our verse 24, and fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be, and let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience, and hear the words of thine handmaid. You know what I really, so that you know what I realize when these Edomites walk past, they look scared. They got that, that image on their face of, oh God. It's not so, so, so like, when they walk past it, they don't realize there's a light. Yeah, I'm trying to say, so that light, that porch, is being shut. You know, it says in the tummy, men hate, men, uh, men hate light. Yeah, and this is that light being shined. So when people walk past, you see they got a, a mischievous spirit, they don't really want to walk past because that light. Oh. So verse 25 Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even above. For as is, as is his name, so is he. Yeah, as is his name, so is he, man. Could the bow mean simple, right? Or a folly, man. Okay. Even the bow, for as his name, so is he. The bow is his name, and folly is with him. But, but I, thy handmaid, saw not the young men of my lord. Yeah, she's a witch. Okay, I already read a spirit. She's a fucking witch, man. Because, hey, in Europe, 
England's got the most witches, man. Mm. That's why all these spirits come out, man. It's getting worse and worse every week. Like, usually they come around 5, 6 o'clock. We just started and they're already here, man. You know? But we're coming to the end of this thing, man. Oh, that verse again, so so verse, 20, verse 25 Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal. For as is his name, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thine handmaid, saw not the young men of my Lord, yes. who now did it said. Yeah, so she's saying, hey, listen, David, man. I didn't, you said those ten young men. I didn't see them. Okay, they just saw my husband. But if I saw them, I would have done what they said, man. Okay, cause I know who you are. I ain't gonna diss you like that. If I didn't see them, okay, it's not like like we were in partners in crime together. Ah, oh, yeah, fuck David, fuck these men. No, I didn't see them, okay. So she's saving her ass and saying, listen, man, had I been there, it maybe would have been a different story. Or, verse verse twenty six. Now therefore, my lord, it's like yeah, my lord, as the lord liveth, Yahweh Shimon Shad, and. As thou, it's like as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord have withholden from coming to shed blood and from avenging thyself with thine own hand. Okay, so David was about to shed some blood. Okay, now, that's the thing, man. The scripture says what? Uh, great men are not always wise. Okay, because, yeah, that's the thing, man. You know, David was a man after the most high's own heart. By the end of the day, what he was about to do was sin, man. Because here it is. Look, what's sin? Right. So if somebody says, if David said, all right, cool. Sorry. 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 No problem, man. No problem. If David says, hey, do this and you don't do it, then you can punish him, man. But you have no right under the law to kill him. Because what law did he break? Yeah, he disobeyed you. All right, cool, get mad. But if you go and kill his ass, that's out of anger, but it's not out of the law, man. Okay? And David actually acknowledges that later on. Okay? But Abigail is saying, hey, it's the Lord that made us mean that he would have gone and shed the blood of you and about. Okay? And avenge the anger. First Samuel 25 and 26. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholden thee from coming to shed blood, and from avenging thyself with thine own hand. Yeah, because David was like, alright, cool, you didn't listen to me, so I'm gonna avenge you with my hand. His hand was what? Himself and the 400 men he came with. Go on. And from avenging thyself with thine own hand. And now let thine enemies and they that seek evil to my Lord be as Nabal. Verse 27. And now this blessing which thine handmaid hath, hath brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the, the young men that follow my Lord. So she was saying, listen man, you asked for this amount, but here I prepared even more. Let this be given unto the men. Okay? And for you, man. Okay? You know, and let it be a blessing unto you. Okay. Verse 28. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Lord, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and evil hath not been found in thee all thy days. Verse 29. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee and to seek thy soul, for the soul of the Lord shall be bound the bundle of life with the Lord thy power and the soul of thine enemies then shall he sling out out of like as out of the middle of a sling verse 30 and it shall come to pass when the Lord have done to my Lord according to all the good that he have spoken concerning me 
and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offence of heart unto my Lord, either that thou hast shed blood coarseness. Okay, so she was trying to put in a good word from above. Or that my Lord have avenged himself, but when the Lord shall have dealt with, it's like a, shall, shall have dealt, dealt well with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. Yeah, because, and that's what I think for you Christians, man. You know, the name of the Lord is because there it's got, it's got um, L-O-R-D, all right, in lowercase and in uppercase, man. So if it's the same, lowercase and uppercase, what, it's the same word, though. So, well, in English it's the same word. L-O-R-D, L-O-R-D, uppercase, lowercase. But what's the difference in Hebrew, okay? When you ask a Christian, all right, so if, if, if God's name is Lord, you have to believe that Lord God is his name. It's his entire name. Okay. Oh, the name Jehovah God. Okay. But you call him as Lord. You don't know the Hebrew, man. Because the, the Lord case is other one. Which means master man, or ruler. Okay. And the all caps is Yahweh. Okay. Not Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yoshi, whatever man is Yahweh. Okay. So she was beseeching David on behalf of her husband in the name of the Lord, Yahweh. Verse, verse 32. And David said, <coughs> David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee, which sent thee this day to meet me. Verse 33. And blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou, which hast kept me this day this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with my own hand for in, for in very very deep as the Lord God of Israel liveth which hath kept me back from hurting except thou hast, hast hasted and come to me so see David is saying hey, bless the Lord man because you know if it weren't for this I would have avenged um, myself you know by taking his blood by my own hands Mm -hmm. But what? Yeah. Except had you hasted. So if she took her time, okay, uh, what do you think? She, you know, she had a little meeting with her handmaidens. Or do you think she should bake cakes or figs? Or, no, she just instantly, hey, do this, do that, do that, and put it on the donkey, let's go, man. Because if she didn't haste, David would already made it to the yard. Man. Okay, and it have been too late. So, um. Verse, verse 34, for in very deep, for in very deep, as the Lord thy power of Israel liveth, which have kept me back from hurting, except thou hast hated, but come to me. Surely there have not been left unto the bar by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall. Verse 35, so David received of her, like a, so David received of her hand that which she had brought to him, and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice, and I have accepted thy person. And Abigail came to the bar, and behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And the bar's heart was merry within him. Yeah, because he was he was rich, man. So he, he could afford to throw a big feast, man. You know, and drink that yard, yeah, yeah, man. Like good wine and stuff, man. Okay. So here he is partying and living it up, while his wife, and that's a fucking nigga, man. You gotta put it like that. Because a man is meant to be the one, the protector of the household, man. Your wife needs something, you got that, man. Okay? You're the one taking care of her, man. Now, yeah, you know, in the ancient world, when women would take care of the house and, and cook for you and all of that, that's her job and bring forth children. But concerning things of battle, concerning things of war, nah, baby, I got that. Okay? You chill, alright? But here it is, his woman is the one face to face with warriors while he's back at home partying, man. Now, what kind of idiot is that, man? Well, 